Hey guys, welcome to the 167th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the I enumerable interface, and I'm going to be showing you how to yield return. So, all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button, and once you have it on your form, just go ahead and double click on it. So, the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a method that returns an I enumerable. And an I enumerable is basically just a collection of objects. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is go up here and say using system.collections since the I enumerable interface is in there, is in the system.collections namespace. So we can just say right here I enumerable, which is an interface, and then we're just going to want to give a name to our method. I'm just going to call it get numbers, and it's basically just going to return um, a collection of numbers in between the minimum and the maximum that the user specifies. So we're just going to say int minimum, int maximum. So we're just going to go right here and say 4, and we don't have to say like int i or something since we already have this minimum right here, so we can just put a semicolon there, and then we can say while the minimum is less than or equal to the maximum, and then we're just going to have it increment the minimum so that it'll go through every number in between the minimum and the maximum. And when it, every time that it loops, we're just going to want to say right here, yield return minimum. And the minimum right here is basically just um, every number in between minimum and maximum. And yield return will basically allow you to only use everything inside of here as you need it. So if we were to just call this method get numbers right here, get numbers, and put a minimum like zero and the maximum is ten, then it wouldn't do anything. Like right now, this doesn't do anything since we're not setting it equal to anything or we're not using it. So yield return will allow us to use these numbers inside of this collection right here only when we need them. So let me just put a breakpoint right there and click the button and we'll see that nothing happens when I step. Yep, it just goes right down there because we're not using um, that collection. If, but if we were to use this collection right here, if we were to loop through everything in this collection, then it would use it because it's only allowing us to use what's in this collection as we need it. So we say for each int in gets numbers and I'll just call this integer i. Then we're just going to have a message box to show saying um, what the integer's value is, so i dot two string. Alright, so now we should get a message box for every number in between 0 and 10. So we get 0, 1, yep, and there we go. Alright, so as you can see, it only uses them as we need them, so that means even if we had um, an if statement here saying if i is equal to um, 5, then we just want it to break out of this. So if i is um, equal to 5, then we just want it to break out of here. Actually, I'll make it lower so we can step through here and watch it. So if i equals 2, then it will just break out of here, and it won't even finish going through this for loop down here either. So let's just go ahead and put a breakpoint there and watch it work. Alright, we step, and then it goes, since it's hitting this method right here, it's going to go down there. And now it'll uh, yield return the minimum, which should be zero, since it hasn't incremented it yet. Then we go down here and check to see if i is equal to two. Since it's not, it'll display the message box, and we get um, a zero message box. Loop through again. It'll yield return one. We get a message box that'll say one. Now we go through again here. It'll generate two. Then it'll check to see if it's two. And then since it is 2, it'll break, and then it'll just jump down here. So as you can see, it never finished going through this for loop. And this is really nice because it will allow us to only use the numbers as we need them. So for example, if it took, mm, I don't know, 5 to 10 seconds to generate a number down here, if you're using this for some um, long computation, then you wouldn't want the user to wait for the whole list to be generated if you're only using some of them. So this is a great thing to use when you're not going to be using a whole collection of items or you're not going to be wanting to wait in between each generation of a number. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial on using yield return. 
So, see you guys.